Oh my God, this is absolutely stunning. Hi guys, I'm Brooke Williamson and welcome to Food School. Today we are learning how to braise. Regardless of whether it's a professional kitchen or a home kitchen, this is a technique to me that is really important. So let's get started with our mise en place. So for this, we're doing braised short ribs. This is also a technique that you could translate into so many different proteins. We're gonna need some mirepoix. Mirepoix is really simple. Onion, celery, carrots. Garlic, strangely, is not a traditional part of mirepoix, but we are gonna add some garlic here. So I'm gonna use thyme in this recipe. I have red wine and mirin for deglazing our short rib pot. I'm using beef stock because we're using beef. And then for a little flavor booster, I've got some Worcestershire sauce. If you can say that, congratulations. I have no trouble saying Worcestershire. <laughs> 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 well, now, Worcestershire, Worcestershire, this thing on. It's easier to say if you think about it phonetically, right? Worcestershire, Worcester, it's actually not Chester. Worcestershire, Worcestershire, Worcestershire. It's not that hard. <laughs> I'm kind of looking for uniformity in these vegetables. I'm gonna cut the top off this, this onion. So today's braise is going to take about ooh, three to four hours, depending on the size of your short ribs. When we're talking a braise that's over maybe an hour or two, you know that the vegetables in this mirepoix are gonna break down. So I don't want them to break down too much, so I'm gonna actually leave some structure to these vegetables. Um, so I'm just gonna do sort of a rough, large dice. And if I were dicing this small, I would kind of do another cut in the middle here, but I'm not even gonna worry about that. I'm just gonna do a large dice here. We're actually gonna end up straining all of these vegetables out. So even if you cut some of your vegetables in a wonky way, you're actually never gonna see it in the final plate up. I always peel toward myself um, and rotate the carrot. You could do this over a trash can, say, save yourself a step. So I'm gonna take the bottom of the carrot and cut it into quarters, same with the top of the carrot. And then I'm gonna cut these pieces about the same size as the onion dice. And push that to the side. Just like peeling the carrot isn't 100% necessary here, neither is cutting off the top and the bottom of the celery. But again, I'm looking for uniformity. In, in all aspects of the kitchen, and I kind of try not to ignore that in my everyday cooking. I'm just gonna cut these down the center, sort of line them all up together. Again, cutting about the same size as the carrots and the onions. So look, it's like a little graph here, right? We've got 50% onion, 25% carrot, 25% celery, and I'm gonna add garlic to this. These are giant cloves of garlic. Um, so, I'm just gonna smash it and you know what? In this circumstance, you kind of don't even need to peel these, but I am gonna peel. I'm not gonna be too precious with this. Again, this is gonna cook for hours and then we're gonna strain it all out. So um, crushing this garlic is plenty. We don't need to chop it up. This is also really fun to do, in my opinion, just to like get out some aggression. I'm gonna sear these short ribs over high heat first, and I wanna ensure that there's an even distribution of heat all over the bottom of the pan. The best way to ensure that is to use a really thick sort of cast iron or Dutch oven. Honestly, I think that there are a few things that are really worth the investment in a kitchen. A good knife that you're gonna use every single day of the week, and a great cast iron. Um, a Dutch oven, is optimal for this, but if you don't have a Dutch oven, you can use any cast iron. Uh, you could use a braising pan. A lot of times um, a roasting pan can be thick enough, and then you end up just sort of covering it with aluminum foil instead of the lid, totally fine. Neutral oil is the best way to go here. Olive oil tends to burn at higher temperatures, so um, I, I kind of always stick with canola oil. While this is warming up, I'm gonna season the short ribs. And I'm gonna liberally season this. We're gonna add a lot of liquid to this. I want the liquid to be seasoned enough so that the flavor of the vegetables and everything that you're sort of stewing into this broth sort of penetrates through the short ribs. You can just season on one side, and then when we, we pop that into the pan, we're gonna go season side down, and then we'll have space to season the top side or the other side of the short rib. I can already feel the heat radiating from this Dutch oven. Um, I'm gonna make sure that I 
coat the bottom of this Dutch oven with oil. The best way to get sort of a perfect golden brown is to make sure that there's enough oil in the bottom and you should hear a loud sizzle when I put these into the pan. Just like that. Do not overcrowd your pan. This pan can very comfortably fit four decent sized short ribs. Um, if I were to put six short ribs in here, the, uh, the pan would become overcrowded. The last thing I want is to drop the temperature of this pot so much that we start to sort of boil the meat. So now you can see in this pot, I have naked short ribs face up with no seasoning on them. So I'm gonna take my salt and pepper and just season the other side. I'm going heavy on the pepper here, actually, because these are beef short ribs and they can handle a decent amount of pepper. I want to taste the pepper. And you don't want to move these around too much. We're looking to caramelize, and that only really happens when there's contact with the bottom of this pot. What I'm looking for is a really beautiful golden brown sear. And then I'm going to flip them over and make sure I, I sear them on all sides. Not only am I developing flavor here by caramelizing the meat, uh, and browning it, uh, but we're creating this really yummy, what we call fond on the bottom of the pan. That fond is going to give us a depth of flavor that you really can only get by browning meat. So I'm just gonna sort of turn these onto their side. I don't want any spots that look uncooked. This will be completely uncooked in the center uh, when we put it into the oven but what I'm looking for is the outside to be nice and golden brown and it will almost look cooked before we even cook it. it it's almost to the point where you, where you might be concerned that you're burning something, you're not. All of that brown on the bottom of the pot is what we're looking for. You can see I'm not being timid with the heat in this pot. This heat is high, it's sort of smoking. If your kitchen can handle it, you can handle it. That's nice. That's nice. I tend to sound like Borat when I'm braising. That's nice. So you can see this gorgeous brown here. That's exactly what I'm looking for. And now it's so important at this point that you have your mise en place ready to go, that you have your mirepoix and your garlic ready to go, because we're going to take these short ribs out and then drop the vegetables directly in. And being ready with that mirepoix is going to keep you from burning the bottom of this pot. This pot is still raging hot. And then I'm going to bring down the temperature a bit with these vegetables. Drop those straight in. I'm going to sweat these vegetables until they're slightly tender and browned on the outside. And again, we're just sort of building flavor here. I took the short ribs out, not because they necessarily needed to come out, but because I want more surface area on the bottom of the pot. So you want to keep an eye on this. This isn't a scenario where you kind of drop stuff in and walk away and have a glass of wine. This is a scenario where you're standing over the pot, making sure that you're not actually burning. And then we're standing by with red wine and mirin to deglaze. So the point of deglazing here is to lift all of those yummy bits off the bottom of the pot. Again, half of your flavor comes from those caramelized bits, and I want to make sure that we incorporate all of them into the broth that we're braising our short ribs in. I've got red wine here. Uh, you could use any red wine. In this case, I'm actually looking for a touch of sweetness, hence the mirin. I'm adding wine that has flavor in its sweetness and not just sugar. This happens really quickly. We're, we're almost at a boil already because, uh, the, because the pot was so hot. And at this point, I'm really just looking to cook the alcohol out of the wine before I add my broth. And I'm just gonna throw some thime in, sticks and all. A few dashes of Worcestershire. This thing on. This is gonna add a little bit of salt, but it's also gonna add sort of a richness and a depth of flavor. Put the short ribs back in, and then I'm gonna sort of just to the top of the meat, I have my beef broth. So I don't need to have these completely submerged, um, but I do want them mostly submerged. This is gonna take three to four hours. All I have to do is put my lid on and pop it in the oven. Honestly, the longer your braised short ribs sit in that broth, the more the flavor develops. So this is a thousand percent something that can be done the day before.
The big reveal is the most exciting part, so let's take the lid off and see where we're at. Oh my God. This is absolutely stunning. That broth has reduced by 75%. That's all now in the braised short rib. The short rib is so tender to the point where literally it has fallen off the bone. Tender short rib that we could just pull apart with our fingers. And it's delicious.